Good morning, everybody. I'm joined here by Mayor Nancy Rotering and Chief of Police Lou Jogman. My name is Chris Covelli, C-O-V-E-L-L-I, and I'm the spokesman for the Lake County Major Crime Task Force. Uh, this morning, we're going to provide you with some updates about where the investigation has led thus far, where we're at, and where we're going to be moving forward. So over the past 24 hours, there's been a significant uh, amount of information obtained by investigators, and this consists of the extremely hard work by Highland Park Police, the Major Crime Task Force, State Police, ATF, and the FBI. Uh, everybody has been collaborating very well to further this investigation. The community has been absolutely terrific as it comes to uh, reporting information that they have, things they may have witnessed, things they may have seen, turning over video that has really helped us uh, further the investigation and aid investigators. One point I just want to clarify is Robert Cremo III, he's 21. He'll be 22 in September of this year. So throughout the past 24 hours, investigators have spoken with numerous witnesses, some of the survivors. Uh, they've had the opportunity to review numerous video clips, uh, both from cell phone video recordings and fixed cameras in the area. And they've con uh, conducted a number of other follow-up investigations. And based on where we're at at this point in the investigation, and some of this is still preliminary, so is subject to change as we keep moving forward. But we do believe Cremo pre-planned this attack for several weeks. Uh, he brought a high-powered rifle to this parade. He accessed the roof of a business via a fire escape ladder and began opening fire on the innocent Independence Day celebration goers. The rifle was purchased in Illinois and the information we have thus far is that it appears to have been purchased legally by Cremo. Uh, during the attack, Cremo was dressed in woman's clothing and investigators do believe he did this to conceal his facial tattoos and his identity and help him during the escape uh, with the other people who were fleeing the chaos. During the attack, we believe that Cremo fired more than 70 rounds from this rifle into the crowd of innocent people. Following the attack, Cremo exited the roof, he dropped his rifle, and he blended in with the crowd, and he escaped. Uh, he walked to his mother's home, who lived in the area, and he blended right in with everybody else as they were running around, almost as he was uh, an innocent spectator as well. He borrowed his mother's vehicle. Uh, we issued an alert yesterday afternoon. Chief Jogman uh, provided the vehicle information and Cremo's information. Uh, we're very thankful that an alert member of the community saw Cremo's vehicle traveling southbound on Route 41, dialed 911, an alert North Chicago police officer spotted the vehicle, waited for additional backup units to arrive, conducted a traffic stop, and they were able to safely apprehend Cremo with no injuries to the officers. Inside the vehicle, there was a second rifle located. Uh, indications is that was purchased by Cremo as well. Thus far, over 30 people were injured during the attack, and this does not include the six who lost their lives. Right now, Cremo remains in custody at this time. Uh, there are no indications that there was anybody else involved in this attack. It, by all indications, it appears Cremo was acting by himself. The Lake County State's Attorney's Office has been with us from the ground level. They're with us this morning. They were with us through the night. Uh, we continue to review the information. Investigators are still developing leads and, and very critical information. Uh, once we're at a point where we're ready to review all of that information for charges, uh, we will sit down with the state's attorney and review for criminal charges. I'll, I'm going to turn this over to the mayor, and then I'll be back up to answer questions. Mayor, thank you. Thank you. Today is a day of grieving together, a day to pause, a day to remember those who left us, those who were injured, and for strength for our community. Several vigil and prayer services are taking place today, both inside and beyond Highland Park. They are as follows. The Community Church of Lake Bluff, 117 East Scranton Avenue, Lake Bluff, will hold a prayer service today at noon. The service will include prayer and music at Christ Church on the corner of Route 60 and Waukegan Avenue in Lake Forest. Trinity Grace Church and Christ Church um, has organized a community prayer gathering at 3 p.m. at Trinity Grace Church, 1506 Half Day Road, Highland Park. Everyone is welcome. Highland Park Presbyterian Church, Trinity Episcopal, and other area faith leaders will hold an ecumenical, 
ecumenical community prayer vigil today at 7 p.m. at the Highland Park Presbyterian Church, 330 Laurel Avenue, Highland Park. All are welcome. Today, Highland Park High School, located at 433 Vine Avenue, in conjunction with community partners, is host hosting crisis counseling until 2 p.m. and is open to everyone. No appointments are necessary. Additionally, a Family Assistance Center will open tomorrow, July 6th at noon to provide support services and crisis assistance to those who were directly impacted at the parade. The location and hours of operations are pending. We'll get that information to the community as soon as we have it. Please go to the city website for more information. The Highland Park Police Department, the American Red Cross, and the FBI Victim Services Response Team are assisting with additional partners. The teams will engage with victims and families to assess their immediate needs and provide crisis intervention and other forms of emergency assistance. Anyone who is a victim of the incident and is in need of support can call 800-CALL-FBI. I know what a generous community we are a part of. We are overwhelmed with the amount of support offered not only from those in Highland Park, but the surrounding region and throughout the nation. Thank you. For those who are looking to donate to victims and in support of the community, we ask that you be mindful of potential scams on GoFundMe and other fundraising avenues. This afternoon, we'll share additional information on the city's website regarding how to donate to the victims, survivors, and those who support the community. For all who have reached out with offers of equipment, food, and professional services, we thank you. Uh, thank you all for coming out today. I'll now turn the mic back to Deputy Chief Cavelli. Thanks, Mayor. Any questions? Yes. Uh, Deputy Chief. Uh, Justin McKinney, can you tell us about the motivation of the suspect cooperating what more are you learning about the motivation either from him or from his online pushing? At this point, we have not developed a motive from him. Uh, investigators are very much furthering the investigation. Uh, they have been in discussions with him. I don't have anything to say about motivation thus far because it hasn't been provided. Sir, right. sir, we've, sir, we've, seen, sir we've seen disturbing videos online. Were, more, were warning signs missed? The question was, there's disturbing videos online that have been seen. Uh, we are reviewing those. Those are going to be a part of any investigation uh, efforts by our task force investigators, Highland Park Police. We'll look at them and we'll see what they reveal. The question was, uh, where did he purchase the weapons and did he tell his mother uh, what he had done? He purchased the weapons locally uh, within the region, so the Chicagoland area. Uh, when he went to his mother's, we have no indication that he provided any information to her. And did he make, did he give us an idea of how many weapons did he purchase and when was So he was in possession of the firearm the day of, the rifle. He was in possession of another rifle in his vehicle when he was pulled over by police. Um, he also had other firearms that were recovered from a residence uh, that he was living in in Highwood. Criswell in his name? They were in his name. And all legally purchased? They were legally purchased. How many his, his level of disguise, right? So how did you guys identify him at this point? I mean, he clearly there was a lot of planning. Do you have an idea of when he placed himself on the roof? Like, is there a timeline? So, so we are working on the timeline, and we don't want to come out with inaccurate information on timing. Um, one of the asks that we have is members of the community, if you have any video of this individual uh, that is walking toward the parade, at the parade, uh, potentially on the roof or exiting to please call 1-800-CALL-FBI. As far as the disguise went, um, he wore that in an attempt to conceal himself. Do you have pictures of that that you can offer? I mean, what do you look like? Or? Potentially, I'll look into that and I'll have to get back how, to you. How, how do you identify him? Considering the extensive digital trail, the disturbing videos, the amount of views garnered, what's he known to law enforcement beforehand and if not, why not? I can't get into that right now. There have been some law enforcement contacts, nothing of a violent nature. I can't get into the specifics of the context of that. And how many rifles? Uh, our colleagues at NBC News are reporting that he purchased multiple weapons. Can you give us any details as to the weapons and how many he may have been in possession? At this time, I know of the two rifles, and I know that there uh, were potentially pistols that he he had owned as well. Chief, are you right? That's right. Sir. Sir, um, has he made any statements to investigators, and does he have an attorney? Uh, 
I'm not going to go into what he may or may not have said. The investigation is still moving forward. I'll provide that information okay. later on. Shooting appears to be completely random. Did you identify him by the Syrian community because of the high population of Jewish people? I know people are concerned that it was an anti-Semitic attack. We have no information to suggest at this point it was racially motivated, motivated by religion, or any other protected status. Can you quick about the videos that appeared on? I believe still in place is an assault rifle ban in Highland Park. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I don't have information on that right now, but we will get back to you on specific Chris, all the videos Chris. of Primo prior to this, did anyone ever call Highland Park Police or tip off authorities that these were online? No, we, we're not, we were not made aware of these videos. Chris, Chris, how did you identify them as a suspect? Through surveillance video or by tracing the gun? So investigators did a really good job. The ATF was phenomenal yesterday. They expedited a uh, trace of the firearm. That was a major investigative lead for us. In addition to that, the witness statements, the videos that we obtained from uh, people that turned them in and the businesses, they all helped us tremendously. Can you break down the number of injuries, not the deceased, and can you also then further break down how many of those were gunshot victims and how many of the injured were not gunshot victims? The information I have right now is that all of those that were either transported to the hospital or self-drove themselves to the hospital were injured by gunfire. So over 30 individuals that were injured by the gunfire, and they went to the three hospitals we mentioned yesterday. Do you have any more info on the ages? He was identified by uh, a, a number of, uh, there were police officers that were able to recognize this photo once it was revealed, and that helped tremendously. Chris, can you help us understand, when you say you know he was there with this woman during the shooting, is that based on photographic evidence or what eyewitnesses have said? And also, can you tell us what type of weapon was used? So it was a high-powered rifle that was used. It was uh, shot high-velocity rounds. It was an AR-15? It could be similar to an AR-15. It okay. was similar to an AR-15. As far as identifying him with the woman's clothes, he was seen on, on video camera in the woman's clothes. Video camera uh, played a tremendous role in how we were able to identify him both uh, leaving initially and as he left. Different and bought at separate locations. Yeah. What's the status on current charges right now? I'm not exactly sure what the woman's attire consisted of. Initially, it was reported that this person had long hair, so a wig isn't out of the question. Can you repeat that? It was a local business right in that vicinity. I'm not sure the name of the business. Uh, he was able to access the roof through a ladder that's affixed to the side of the building. We'll take three more, okay? What happened with, those, with that clothing? Did he dump it somewhere or did he have it on him? Have you talked to his parents at all? We've talked to teachers since he was with an elementary school that have contacted his parents several times saying there were issues with him as a teen and a young child growing up. What kind of Sure. It, it, one of the parents? things that, that is important to remember here is the diligence and investigation, we're going to reach out to everybody we possibly can that has information, first-hand information about him, whether that's family members, teachers, uh, friends, whoever it is that has information. But it does take time. It takes time to gather who may know him, who knew him in the past, teachers. That is something that task force investigators are working on. They've interviewed a number of people thus far. But please keep in mind, we're 24 hours in. There's a lot of work to be done here. We're not done. I don't want to get into levels of cooperation. Were the weapons modified at all? No indication the weapons were modified. One more. One more. One more. One more. Children weapons. No children have passed away. We'll take your last one. They gave the box of weapons. What address did he give? I'm not sure what address he gave. I can get back to you on that. All right, we'll be back this afternoon about 3 o'clock. We hopefully have an updated status on charges. He'll remain in custody at this point. Three o'clock. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.